Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Gonda. I'm a relatively new Modena fancier. I have started breeding them since around 2019 and I've joined the National Modena Club around that same time. Um, I currently live in Ohio. I have lived in Hawaii and in California and I still, you know, go back and forth. Um, but Shane, our lovely president, has asked me to do a Modena moment based on my veterinary background about biosecurity and the health of our wonderful breed. So before I start the video, I just wanted to touch upon that the University of Minnesota, their veterinary department, has had a similar video that I'll touch upon um, some of what they do as well about biosecurity. I'll give you guys a link so you can go check it out. It's a little YouTube video. It's pretty much talking about the same thing. So before we start, I think I should kind of outline what biosecurity means. Um, the USDA, the Department of Agriculture, and then APHIS, Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, and the VS, the Veterinary um, Services, all these government programs have come together to make a uh, little handout, um, a publication about biosecurity. And they describe as biosecurity as being the means of doing anything you can to reduce the chances of infectious diseases being carried onto your farm or onto your loft by people, animals, equipment, um, or even vehicles. Um, it also means doing everything you can to reduce the chance of infectious diseases from leaving your farm or leaving your loft. So the USDA um, on that fact sheet talks about biosecurity in farms and in poultry. But how can one practice biosecurity in pigeons on a kind of smaller scale to minimize the risk of infectious or pathogenic diseases from entering and exiting your loft? Your first step, ask fanciers to identify some of the possible risk of introducing diseases from the loft. Um, some of them you can identify as, do you keep multiple lofts? Do you face cross-contamination with wildlife? Do you have racing or showbirds that are always in and out of your loft? Um, whether that means they're flying outside or they're um, on and off premise for the show season. Um, did you get new birds into your loft? Um, and do you have preventative protocols? So that means like food cleanliness, you know, keeping them in a storage so nothing could get in there. Um, same with water storage, you know, how can we minimize the risk of pigeons defecating in the water because somehow they manage to do it every single time. Um, or even the structural health of your loft or whatever your housing facility may be. So when we talk about biosecurity prevention on the outside, it means what can we do to help prevent, you know, before being inside the loft. Um, so I like to check my loft like it has infectious disease. Even if I have healthy birds, I'm being, it helps me be cautious of what I bring in and what I bring out of the loft. Um, so before entering, I do a few things. I look at a log of my bird health. Um, it's just a little notebook that has, you know, my bird band number, some identifying factors, and just general of, okay, she laid this egg. He looked a little droopy today. It helps me understand, you know, what's been going on. And on that log as well, if I take a bird to a show or if I take him off premise to the clinic with me, um, I log that as well because that help us, you know, decipher if a bird does become sick, how long has he been acting for? And then what are the possible factors? Could it be viral, bacterial, or fungal? And usually in the cases where my birds don't leave the premise, it probably could be bacterial or fungal. Before I enter my loft, I kind of wear special clothes only um, for my loft. Uh, that just means like a little jacket and a special set of shoes. It just is to prevent outside contaminants. Uh, especially since, you know, after a long day of working with sick animals, I want to try my best to prevent from bringing any of that home or bringing any of that into my healthy bird loft. Um, poultry farms even have special lockers outside of their aviaries that hold different, a whole different set of clothes, like overalls, boots, you name it, um, for each specific loft, for each worker to prevent cross-contamination. Um, so again, before entering my loft, I wash my hands, I look over my log just to know who do I need to look out for, um, and I use a foot bath. A foot bath means that, you know, 
I'm walking from here, you know, in my home all the way outside and then back into my loft. I have trees, I have a lot of wild birds, there's probably a lot of bird defecate and whatever in my yard that I wanna get off my shoes first. So I'll just stick my feet in, you know, my shoes in a, a little beach bleach bath um, to try and disinfect a little bit. Um, especially now that we have the migratory season going on and with that, migratory birds are bringing uh, avian influenza. So, um, there's a lot of misnomers about avian influenza that I have heard over the course of time. A lot of the information um, and research is still ongoing. So pigeons are susceptible to infection. Though how severe the infection can be, can be have zero symptoms or can have neurological symptoms or just conjunctivitis. The biggest thing now is that they can be carriers. So if you take your bird off premise, you know, you're exposing your bird to possible, um, or if, you, if your bird leaves the loft and you don't have racing birds fly around, your birds possibly have, act, have you know, interaction with something vital. Um, so just be careful, especially it's, it's gotten pretty bad. I work with the Ohio Wildlife Center up here, and obviously I work with OSU, and we've been doing a lot of logs about infectious birds, and it's, it's the numbers that have been pretty high just in Columbus only, so be careful. After that, um, we'll talk about prevention on the inside. So a lot must be tidy, um, good ventilation with enough sunlight and watch out for structural health because wood breaking down can lead to possible fungal infections um, and illnesses. But birds are birds. You're never gonna have 100% tidy or 100% clean loft. We all know that. It's never gonna be sterile. Um, but most should try and pick a protocol of cleaning um, disinfecting or sanitizing. Those are all three different things, but I'm going to try and use um, disinfecting and sanitizing interchangeably, just because it kind of is in this sense. Um, and as well, keeping a good schedule of, you know, how you're going to clean and do your protocols. Um, I check to make sure that my birds' food and grit are stored in containers properly, just so mice and rats can't contaminate it as well. Um, new birds, um, or even sick birds, I will quarantine them for a minimum of 14 days. The gold standard is 30 days, but not a lot of people have quarantine lofts. And when I quarantine birds, I take them into my house. So I don't have a lot of space to do that. So I quarantine them for 14 days. And if they have any symptoms afterwards, then obviously they stay in quarantine longer until treatment is done. Um, but again, most important thing, clean that loft. Um, rinse drinkers daily if you can, um, and feeders minimum once a week because, you know, birds will defecate in their feeders too. I mean, we, we try to prevent it, but birds will be birds. Um, you can also clean them indoors every three weeks. So every three to four weeks, I will actually take my plastic drinkers and feeders in and I'll just, I'll either put them in the dishwasher if they fit with no soap, just a heat cycle to kind of have that heat kill off whatever bacteria is on there um or if they don't fit i'll put them in my bathtub and i'll do a little bleach bath just to make sure that they have a good soak and then rinse them off so again back with disinfecting sanitizing choosing the best disinfectant is important especially um, for situational use as they can have many different uses, some disinfectants are specialized while others are all-purpose or labeled as biocidal. Um, when implemented correctly, you know, um, the cleaning protocols can be a cost-effective mean of reducing disease-causing organisms. It's better, it's cheaper to prevent than it is to treat, um, typically in the veterinary world. So it's good to understand what do you need, what are you cleaning for? You know, what infections are you fighting or what are you hoping to prevent? Is it fungal, viral, parasitic, bacterial? Is it some of these or all of these? It's good to have a specialized cleaning and then an all-purpose cleaning, but make sure that you don't um, cross, you know, cross those uh, disinfectants because sometimes you can make uh, not so good reactions. Um, the Center for Food and Security Public Health has good information on disinfectants and how best to choose them for your situational needs. So when 
again, comes to that cleaning protocol, um, sanitizing, disinfecting is a two-step process that, you know, involves both cleaning and disinfecting. So, um, typically when cleaning services, you want to get rid of the organic material and the matter um, with your disinfectant or a paper towel. And then secondly, you want to use the disinfectant again and leave it for a contact time. So, each product has a leave-on time before you wipe it off, clean it off, or sometimes they don't even need to be cleaned off. Most products is about 10 minutes for disinfecting fully or to their maximum um, potential. So that doesn't mean that they'll get you know rid of all the organisms or whatever it's trying to fight. Um, it's just it has a higher chance of working effectively. But again, you have to clean off all those organics first because then it won't clean effectively. Um, some products that I use, um, F10 um, is a disinfectant that is a biocidal, so um, it gets rid of fungal, bacterial, um, viral, so most infectious diseases. Um, what I use in clinical application is you can dilute it in certain forms, and I'll give you the information for that. Um, but you can use it as like a low cleaner, you know, you dilute it at a certain level, or you can use it as a most resistant virus, and dilute it at a higher level, you know, you want a higher concentration of the disinfectant to the water. Um, but I like to use it as nebulizing, so if I have a bird that just has a respiratory infection that just won't go away, I'll nebulize the bird, um, just like with humans, you know, you get a little mask. Uh, but actually, I put them in kind of like a dog kennel and just put the nebulizer machine in there, and it just creates this lovely foggy mess. <laughs> um, so the reason why I like F10 as a veterinary disinfectant and just an overall um, use in my loft is because it's high performance. It's been tested, tried, and true. It's low toxicity and low irritation, so it's used with newborn puppies it's used with newborn kitties again used in nebulizing with birds so it's pretty safe with your animals um and the thing i like about it is that there's no need to rinse off this so once you have your contact time of 10 minutes sitting there you can leave it to evaporate or leave it to stay because it has um uh ongoing residual effect so it will be help with you know reducing the bacteria on the surface for the next time that you the next thing that I use in my loft is chlorhexidine. I use the Gluconit 2%. It's already, it's pre-diluted. The undiluted is called Novasan, so N-O-V-A-L-S-A-N. Um, so you'll find that, and that's kind of also the brand name of it. Uh, it's EPA registered disinfectant proven to work at, against at least 60 different bacteria, fungi, yeast, and viruses. Though it is not as, you know, high rates of as that F10 is. So it's not corrosive, corrosive and minimal to no skin irritation. So we use it in surgery scrub. So if we have a bird or an animal that we need to, you know, clean the surface before we make our initial surgery incision, we clean with chlorhexidine. It's kind of in the place of betadine. But um, how I use it, again, in wound cleaning, wound flushing, I use it specifically in my bathing and drinking water and occasionally as like a spot disinfectant. Um, if you know I had just cleaned, I'll just take a little bit and wipe it off. But um, again, not my select cleaner, but it's a good for a preventative measure and how I add it to my water um, and how I dilute it. I will give you guys the information. Lastly, um, I use bleach just because um, it's a general disinfectant. I personally only use bleach in my foot bath because it's typically not safe for a bird's respiratory, you know, tract. Um, they're quite weird. <laughs> they're respiratory, they have different air sacs, so they aren't just like how we have two lungs. They have, you know, multiple things going on in there. It's pretty cool. Um, but I only use bleach in my foot bath, again, to help disinfect outside contaminants. So. I don't track them back into my loft. Um, especially too with bleach, if you are to clean your loft or your surfaces, it has to have a contact time of no less than 10 minutes, um, which means you have to completely saturate the area, even if it's diluted. If it's diluted, it has to be longer than 10 minutes. It's just a whole lot of 
bleachy fumes and masks that I just don't like to use. Um, but here's the mix I use for my um, bleach bath or just for general disinfecting. So going back onto um, preventative measures and biosecurity, part of that is um, vaccinating protocols. You know, how do you vaccinate? When do you vaccinate? Um, is it appropriate? Um, the biggest thing too, uh, a good example is paramyxovirus. When it spread in California, um, obviously pigeons are affected, but um, breeders, you know, vaccinate their birds, then they can still become a vector for a disease. Just because your bird is vaccinated does not mean it does not carry that disease anymore. Um, it could be healthy, could be showing so no signs of symptoms, again, could be vaccinated, but can carry paramyxovirus, which is why they put, you know, the USDA um, and APHIS put that huge ban on traveling for a while in those certain areas of California. Um, that may start to happen as we see with avian influenza. Um, again, with the migratory season, we are seeing a lot of waterfowl and bring it in, bringing, you know, that infection in. Um, so that's possibly going to happen. We don't know. The best thing that we can do as, um, you know, the National Dina Club or the National Pigeon Association we can do is show that, hey, to APHIS, hey, to USDA, we are following good protocols to keep healthy, safe birds.